Hey, what is going on to Nintendo Nation? Hope you're having an awesome day. Today we've got another Pokemon anime video for you guys. You loved the last one a lot, that was uh, 10 things you need to know about the new Pokemon anime. And I thought let's talk about 10 reasons why I'm personally really excited about the potential of this brand new Pokemon anime and why you guys should be as well. So if you do enjoy today's video, make sure to hit the like button down below and if you want to stay up to date with everything Pokemon Sword and Shield and of course the Pokemon Sword and Shield anime, whatever it's going to be called, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to become a part of the Twintendo Nation. So first of all, number one, the first reason why I'm excited for the Pokemon Sword and Shield anime, I'm just going to call it that for now, it's probably going to have a different name, but Ash will be visiting all the Pokemon regions we've seen so far in the games and anime. So if you didn't know, um, Ash will be visiting all the previous regions, including the Gala region as well. Um, now, not only will we see brand new towns and cities from the Gala region, we've yet to see in the anime, and at the moment we've yet to see these places in the games, we don't know too much about the Gala region, but we also get to see some old locations in previous regions, such as cities and towns. So for certain regions like Johto and Hoenn, it's been a very long time since Ash has visited them. So seeing how some of those cities have changed over these last like 10, 15, 20 years will be very exciting to see, and the reason I say that is we can see how much Vermilion City in Kanto has changed over the years. So originally when we saw it in the first Pokemon season, um, it looked like a small port city. It was still like big enough to be a city, but it just didn't look anything impressive. However, in this upcoming Pokemon anime, uh, Vermilion City looks a lot more built up with more skyscrapers and the Harbour Bridge seems to have been expanded quite a bit. We can see the comparison looked pretty small in the original anime. Now it looks much much bigger. Now at the moment this is the only old location that we've seen so far revisited in the new anime uh, and this is because Vermilion City is the location for Professor Sagaragi's laboratory who's a new professor. Um, honestly I really can't wait to see even more cities we've not seen since the early years of the Pokemon anime and see how they look now. So that is my first point. The second point, um, this is what I mentioned in one of my previous videos, according to descriptions of the latest anime series it sounds like Ash will no longer be the sole protagonist of the Pokemon anime as the brand new character Go will be one of the main characters. Now Go's dream in the anime is to catch all Pokemon so that it may one day bring him closer to realising his true goal to catch Mew, who he saw as a kid. Now in regards to the dual protagonist approach being described for this new series, it is possible that it could be a mistranslation. We've had so many mistranslations for the Pokemon Sword and Shield build up such as the 18 gyms, the tall grass taking half a year to design, 156 new Pokemon, fairy type Ponyta. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of mistranslation and you know potentially this could be as well. Maybe it means Go isn't like a, a dual protagonist, he doesn't have the same importance as Ash. Maybe he's just a typical traveling companion, but if he's not, that is a brand new thing for Pokemon to have two main characters instead of obviously just having Ash. And since Ash has kind of realized his main goal in the last series, Pokemon Sun and Moon, becoming a Pokemon champion, um, maybe that's why they're doing this dual protagonist. So either way, it's going to be very exciting to see whether Go does complete his goal and hopefully it won't take him 20 plus years to accomplish it, unlike a certain someone. So next up, as I mentioned in my first point, I'm really excited at seeing old locations in a brand new light. But let's not forget we'll also be seeing a brand new region in the anime, the Gala region. As of right now, we still don't know too many locations ourselves that are in Gala since we've yet to play Pokemon Sword and Shield. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. And yeah, of course, alongside new locations, a brand new Pokemon that will make their debut in the anime, which is always exciting. And as we know, Gala is based off the UK, so as someone who lives there, this anime series is going to hold greater significance to me, as it's possible I'll recognise places in the anime that are based off areas in the UK, so for me that is very, very exciting. Now I know Ash will be revisiting like all the other regions, so hopefully there will be enough time to explore the Gala region quite a lot and maybe even have some anime original locations like they mainly do in you know the Pokemon anime series. But we don't even know how much Gala is going to get explored because like I said, Ash will be travelling all over the place in this brand new series. Another exciting aspect of the new Pokemon anime series is that we'll see the anime debut of Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. Well, I mean, we have seen giant Pokemon in the anime before, like the giant Dragonite and Ash's Trico growing really, really big. And believe me, there are a lot more examples to go, but at least Gigantamaxing will be completely brand new. Now, the reason why I'm super confident we'll see Dynamaxing in the anime is because of the giant Snorlax on the anime poster, which is located on the Gala region part of the poster. Now, of course, Snorlax is a gigantic Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but all the Pokemon on the poster are drawn to scale, so seeing the Snorlax as almost as big as a building strongly hints at the anime debut of Dynamax and Gigantamax forms. 
Also, I think it's highly likely that we'll see a Gigantamax battle between Ash's Pikachu and Team Rocket's Meowth at some stage in the anime since we both know they each have a Gigantamax form. I'll be very, very shocked if that doesn't happen. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Professor Sagaragi, the new professor in the anime, is located in the Kanto region, particularly in Vermilion City. Therefore, not only is it likely that we'll see Ash return to Pallet Town and see Professor Oak, it's also very likely that we'll see his old Pokemon at the Professor's lab. Now, since Ash will be revisiting regions he has a lot of history with, it's likely some of Ash's Pokemon will rejoin him on his travels and go back to the region they came from, like Ash's Sceptile going back to Hoenn and Inferno going back to Sinnoh. Now, maybe that's wishful thinking on my part, but it would be a great opportunity to see some of Ash's best Pokemon return to the spotlight once again, even if it's for an episode or two. It's also very likely that we'll see Ash's powerhouse of a Pokemon, Charizard, return to take on its new Gigantamax form. Now, technically, obviously, Charizard did have Mega Revolutions in X and Y, and we never saw Ash's Charizard Mega Evolve. But I think it's more likely that Charizard could Gigantamax rather than Mega Evolve since there's kind of more requirements for that. Or at least that's how it seems at the moment. Maybe the requirements for Gigantamaxing is actually more than I think. Uh, but yeah, I really wouldn't surprise me if Charizard does get Gigantamax form in the anime. Uh, but like I said, I'd love to see some of Ash's old Pokemon return, similar to how Bulbasaur did in Pokemon Advanced. And then we had uh, Ash's Cyndaquil return in the Diamond and Pearl series and then it evolved into Quilava so hopefully that would be really really cool to see some of Ash's Pokemon uh, come with him on a journey and maybe even have some of them evolve, I think that would be really really cool to see. Now this next point is quite similar to the previous one, it's less likely to happen but would be much more exciting and this is seeing Pokemon that have been released make an appearance. Now the previous point with some of Ash's old Pokemon travelling around the regions, to me that's incredibly exciting so the fact that this is more exciting tells you how much I really want this to happen so as you guys know if you've been watching the Pokemon anime for a long time there have been quite a few Pokemon released from either Ash or Team Rocket down the years and yet it's been ages since we've seen them. Now some of them I don't expect to see again like Butterfree as God knows where that ended up but could you imagine the fans reactions if Butterfree made a reappearance and I'm not talking about because I'm pretty sure it did appear in a Japanese only Pokemon opening I'm not talking about that I mean an episode dedicated to its return I think that would go incredibly viral because some of us uh, are still very affected by Bye Bye Butterfree it was a very incredible episode and yeah I don't know I just love to see Butterfree again but I don't think that's very likely however we could see some Pokemon that were released that we know where they are, so they're released to fixed locations like Ash's Pidgeot, which should still be in a forest outside of Pallet Town. Now in fact, Ash promised to come back for it after he was done with the Orange Islands. Now the episode he released Pidgeot was aired in 1999, which has been 20 years and waiting for us fans to see Pidgeot again, so hopefully we'll see it again. Unlikely, but it would be incredibly exciting. Now of course, there's also the possibility of seeing Greninja again, as we can see Greninja on the anime poster. Now whether this is Ash's Greninja, it's hard to say, I'm going to say no, just because it make more sense to see it in like its Ash Greninja form. Uh, but it's certainly a possibility and I wouldn't rule it out. And speaking of the poster, for my next point, we can see an awful lot of legendaries. Now it's fair to expect that the Pokemon we can see on the poster should appear in this new anime series. And interestingly enough, these legendaries that appear on this poster have all appeared in the movies, such as Lugia, Latios and Latias, Rayquaza, Rayquaza, however you want to say it, and uh, yeah, so on, like Dialga, Palkia, Zekrom, Reshiram. It would be very exciting to see some of these Pokemon return. I think episodes with legendary Pokemon are always some of my favourite, just because it feels very special, because as we know, legendary Pokemon mainly make their appearances in the Pokemon movies, specifically these Pokemon on the poster, funnily enough, so I would really love to see Lugia, Latios and Latias because those are the three that really had a big effect on me compared to the others. I think I'd like to see any of those legendaries, don't get me wrong, but Lugia, I mean the second Pokemon film is one of my favourite Pokemon films and maybe one of my favourite films of all time, I just really really enjoyed that. And Latios and Latias from Pokemon Heroes, that was a really good film and pretty emotional, I won't spoil why, but yeah I would love to see these legendaries make a reappearance. Now just like seeing old Pokemon, it's also likely that we'll see some of Ash's old travelling companions in the new series. So it's no secret that Brook and Misty returning to the anime in Pokemon Sun and Moon was a big thing as fans new and old were talking about it. It went viral as you guys know. Now in my opinion it would be too good an opportunity to pass up if the writers behind the new series don't bring back some of Ash's companions. Like it's been a really really long time since May and Max, but more importantly May, made an appearance in the anime. 
whereas it looks increasingly likely that Serena won't even make an appearance in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, since that is pretty much ending uh, next week. And it's pretty unusual the fact that the next Pokemon series, or the technically the current one airing, uh, doesn't show the previous traveling companion like Serena. I find that very weird, so maybe they're saving Serena for this brand new series because they're going to be showing off a lot if not all of Ash's previous traveling companions. For me if they don't do that it is a big opportunity missed. So let me know in the comments who would you like to see the most. For me it's May just because I really really grew up on the Pokemon Advance series and if we're not counting Max uh, she is like the traveling companion that we've not seen in the longest. Her last appearance was in the Diamond and Pearl series so it wasn't too long ago. Well I say that actually that was quite a long time ago but to me it don't feel that long ago so yeah we'd definitely like to see May. Let me know like I said in the comments who you'd like to see the most. Now this next point I mentioned in my previous Pokemon anime video but I'm going to mention it again for those who don't know so the composer for like the musical composer for the uh, new series is Yuki Hayashi the man behind My Hero Academia and Haikyuu soundtracks and he's basically in charge of making the soundtrack for the brand new series so the original composer left so this is really going to shake things up I think and this person makes some very good soundtracks. My Hero and uh, Haikyuu have some very good soundtracks and his tracks are often used for epic action scenes and moments of high intensity so does this appointment suggest we'll be getting the same treatment in a new Pokemon anime? Hopefully yes but yeah I think that's a really good appointment and I'm very excited to hear what his music sounds like compared to the old composer. And my final point as to why you should be excited for the new Pokemon anime or why I'm excited personally. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch this one but I'm going to stand by it. And this is that there is a preview for the next Pokemon movie and it shows Pikachu in this art style of the new series of Pokemon anime. Um, and maybe the Sun and Moon style, they're quite similar, it's, it's hard to say but I feel like there's not much to different about Sun and Moon Pikachu and the new series Pikachu but essentially that Pikachu design is quite different from the Pokemon movies I Choose You and The Power of Us uh, because they kind of go for the traditional like X and Y art style um, just to kind of the, you know the more I guess normal Pokemon art style um, but yeah this Pikachu that we see in this um, like preview I guess or teaser uh, looks like I said doesn't look like the Pikachu we've seen in the last couple of films and I really do miss when Pokemon films were related to the ongoing series and I'm really really hoping this means that we're going to have some Pokemon movies that are related to the brand new Pokemon series rather than just doing their own thing because I don't think as as okay as they were I, I actually liked I Choose You quite a bit the power of us not too bothered about that and the 3D Pokemon film don't even get me started on that uh, but I really did miss that there wasn't any link between the series and the film so hopefully that is remedied I think the fans kind of voice their opinion on that and I think they're listening to Pokemon um, so yeah I feel like Pokemon movies will be linked back to this new anime which is gonna be very exciting we'll have to wait and see but that is what I got from this little teaser so guys those are 10 reasons to be excited for the brand new Pokemon anime those are my personal reasons let me know in the comments below if there's any others that I didn't mention and of course if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see me make more Pokemon anime videos, make sure to hit the like button down below. And if you want to stay up to date with everything Pokemon Sword and Shield, and of course the Pokemon anime, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to become a part of Twin Tendo Nation. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you on the next video. Peace!